everybody, Michelle McLuhan, Astrologer and Life Navigator, and I'm pleased to be bringing you another astrology update for the new moon, which is happening on the 10th of March in the sign of Pisces. And we are feeling that energy as it moves towards the new moon, because this is a super moon, which means that it's closer to the earth and therefore more powerful, even if we can't see it. So just to know that anything that I'm going to say about this new moon, you may already be feeling and it may be a little more intense than normal. New moons are always a time of new beginnings. It's a time to plant new seeds, uh, new intentions, fresh intentions. So this new moon is the last new moon of our astrological year. And the next full moon is going to be basically our first full moon of the astrological year, which begins in Aries, when the sun enters into Aries. So this new moon, uh, not only the sun and the moon are in the sign of Pisces, but on the other side of each side of them, we've got Saturn on the one and Neptune on the other. Now they're quite wide in terms of their, what we call a conjunction, which means that they're not right on top of the new moon, but they still are influencing the new moon. And if I look into and feel into that energy, it's very dual. So the sign of Pisces is a dual sign. If you look at the symbol of Pisces, it's two fish swimming in opposite directions. There are many different interpretations of what that means, but duality is one of them. It's a dual sign. It's one of the dual signs in the zodiac, and it often means that we're connected to the divine, to the all that is, but we're also, also still are connected to earth. When we have a lot of planets in Pisces, either in your own chart or in um, a situation like this where it's actually affecting the collective, there's often the sense of, yes, I'm connected to all that is, but there's also still very real concerns about what needs to be sorted out on the ground. And this is what I see with the two uh, planets that are straddling the new moon. So you've got the new moon in the middle, and on one side of the new moon, you've got Neptune, and on the other side, you have Saturn. Now, Saturn and Neptune are very different energies. Neptune is the planet of the ocean. Neptune is the king of the ocean. So when Neptune is connected with Pisces, being the ruler, the modern ruler of Pisces, it intensifies the Pisces energy. Saturn, on the other hand, is also moving through the sign of Pisces, which I've spoken about quite a lot. It's been there for a few months. And Pisces, Saturn in Pisces is showing us where our illusions are. It's the breaker of illusions. It can sometimes feel like it's the breaker of the ideal. It can even be the dissolver of the ego. So if you look at these two energies, looking at Neptune along with the sun and the moon in Pisces, very similar energy, Neptune and Pisces. So if you look at that, what is Neptune and what is Pisces? So Pisces is the fish, Neptune is the ocean, and it represents Pisces as a sign, as the last sign of the zodiac. It represents the all that is. You want to call it the divine, the universe, infinity, the formless. That is what Neptune and the Pisces energy actually represents. So we come into this earth and we feel separated from our true essence of being, which is all that is. Because we come in with physical bodies and roles and names and things that we have to do and expectations that others have of us and we have of ourselves. So we come in and we feel separated as humans from the all that is. And every year when the, when the sun goes around and actually comes to Pisces, we get reminded of who we really are. But at that time, there can also be a huge amount of sensitivity because Pisces as a sign connects with all that is. So it's very empathic. It's highly sensitive. At this time of the year, it almost feels like the boundaries between us and everything else are thinner and more permeable. So a lot of us might be feeling a lot of emotion right now. Um, if you look at Pisces, it's a water sign. It's what we call a mutable water sign. So it's just all over. There's kind of no containment. So if emotions come up, they sort of can feel like they're going to flood you. And there might not even be, and very often with this Pisces energy, there might not be any clarity as to why you're feeling this emotion. Why this particular sadness or feeling of guilt or anxiety or whatever it is, 
or insecurity has come up for you because it's not in the world of form. It's beneath the surface. So that's the other part of Pisces. It's beneath the surface. It's mysterious. It's actually quite nebulous. So when we try to understand what we're feeling, we're actually taking um, ourselves out of the feeling and into the brain or into the mind. And we're trying to analyze that which often cannot be analyzed. So as this, this new moon comes into being, and for the rest of the month, really, uh, largely, because there's a lot of Pisces energy around, um, just know that if you're feeling the feelings more, um, just we need to actually ride those waves of those feelings. So it's not to block them, it's not to repress them, it's to feel them in the moment that they arise and allow them to flow through us and out. Now, if we start to analyze it, we, we're creating a block very often. But if we're actually able to just let it be there and surrender and open more to the feeling, whatever it may be, without having to know what it is, then it actually moves through and flows through. And that's the positive part of Pisces, is the ability to allow flow, to actually flow through our lives and not to hold on too tightly to what we might perceive as correct or perfect or uh, the plan. So at this time, you might be feeling kind of in between worlds. And I pulled a very interesting card for us. Um, you might not be sure about where you are. It might be very uncertain, very uncertain times. And this is not just the new moon in Pisces. This is other stuff that's going on as well. It's got a lot to do with Saturn in Pisces because Saturn in Pisces will still be there for about two years. And in that time, we're reassessing what, um, what is real and what isn't real. And very often what we do as humans is we put the emphasis on the things in our lives and the people in our lives and the situations and the jobs and the houses as what is real. And if you look at that, it's not really true because all of those things will at some point dissolve and leave because the world of form is in constant change and nothing is forever. So no thing is forever. So Pisces asks us to look at the no-thingness, at the formless part of ourselves, at the formless part of the whole universe. And in that place and in that way, we connect with other people. So it's a time to actually be connected, but not overwhelmed by other people's um, issues and troubles and difficulties. So to hold a space, so to be the observer, it's, it's a tricky one because you're actually feeling the feelings, not get drawn, not getting drawn into them so that you just feel like you're overwhelmed at the same time as you're watching what's happening. So you don't need to necessarily get drawn into someone's sadness, but you can hold a space for their sadness. You can hold a space for whatever they might be going through simply by listening. Um, Pisces is actually very connected with listening, the ears, listening. So just being a space for someone. If they're going through something, well, you don't need to fix it. You don't need to change it. You don't need to resolve it. You don't need to find a way out of it. If we can just be that, holding space for ourselves and others, that allows the healing to come in, which is another part of Pisces, is the healer. But the healing can only happen when there's a flow. As soon as something gets stuck, that's where there's a blockage. So just be aware that if you're feeling a little bit fatigued, you might be feeling a bit sorry for yourself at times, you might be feeling even victimhood arising, which is the sort of shadow of Pisces. You know, if it wasn't for so-and-so, this wouldn't be happening for me. Poor me, little me. Um, Pisces is, is there to show us that victim side, but to also show us that that's not the true us. Because the true you is much, 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 much bigger than this little us, this little you that is hurt or betrayed or let down or insecure. So Pisces season is the season to remind us of who we really are, our divine heritage, our, con our infinite being. That's what Pisces is actually teaching us. And it's interesting because Saturn, on the other side of Neptune, 
um, is here to actually teach us that. And being in Pisces for another two years, he's teaching us. He's helping us to attain more spiritual mastery. He's helping us to see that we are not our roles. We are not our achievements. We are not um, just this body, this person, this person with a name. We are much, much more than that. So this time for all of us is the breaking of illusions, the illusions which we think are giving us safety, security, um, um, well-being, and seeing what else is possible. So opening up to the infinite possibilities that are available in each and every day and just noticing when our mind goes into the small possibilities, the, the limited possibilities, the conditioned self. So if there's an abundance issue, if there's an issue with money not flowing or relationships not flowing, we tend to go into the victimhood or we tend to go into the fear about it and we tend to have this feeling that it's going to last forever and that, oh my goodness, I'm never going to get out of it. But we will and we have to because there's always cycles. There's, it's a constant, we're in constant motion all the time. This energy reminds me of something I was taught years ago by a surfer. And he said to me, you know, if we attach to any one particular state, he's talking about waves and surfing, um, you, you can't attach to anything. So either you, you're in the ocean and you're waiting for the wave, for the next wave, um, or you're paddling like crazy to actually catch the wave, or you're riding the wave. But you're not doing all three at once. And when you're riding the wave, there's a knowingness that at some point that ride is going to stop and you're going to go back to the shore or you're going to get dumped and there's going to be another way of actually dealing with the water. If you're in the trough, which is where you're waiting for the wave, that's where you just wait and you just be in that. And we accept that this is not a time for movement because it's not moving. So the, our struggle and our suffering comes from wanting it to move when it isn't moving. So being in the trough of the wave and desperately struggling because we want another wave. And there, it isn't time. So this is a time, I believe, in terms of our reality as humans and in terms of this huge evolutionary shift. And I'm sure that you can relate to most people are dealing with something right now. It doesn't matter where they are on their spiritual journey. It doesn't matter how conscious they are. Most people are dealing with something. If you're not wonderful, then you're riding the wave and you can help other people who are battling. But if you are in a state of confusion, if you are in a state of sadness, if you are feeling things at a very deep level, if you are feeling overwhelmed, just know that this too will pass. It has to. That's the nature of the universe. So that's what I feel is what this new moon is bringing for us. And the way that we process this new moon as we end off our astrological year is going to influence how we actually start our next, our next year, which is where the sun starts in Aries again. Uh, and that's going to be starting with an eclipse. So that's really powerful. Uh, this new moon also gives us the opportunity, if you enjoy creativity on any level, to spend some time being creative. There's kind of an open flow to creativity, so allow yourself this weekend to kind of sink into that beingness, to just be, to rest if you need to rest this new moon, to let go, to just allow yourself a little bit of time out of the busyness. You know, we as humans are one of the only species, if not the only species, that doesn't rest. We rest at night, but then we just keep going. You know, a lot of other species hibernate um, or plant the plant world. You know, if you, if you take a plant, a crop, if you harvest a crop, generally farmers will leave that land to replenish itself before you plant another crop. So this is the, the month where we're actually allowed to rest a bit, step back a bit, lean back a little bit from having to work everything out, having to decide what you want to do for the rest of your life and decide on your next five-year plan and 10-year plan and goodness knows what. 
So it's time to just be. So see if you can just be and allow yourself to be in a space of unknowing, of not knowing. That's the way I would deal with this. Be gentle on yourself and others. Be as compassionate as you can with people if they're overreacting, if they're, if they're insecure, if they're bursting into tears for no reason, if they're confused. See if you can just find that within you um, to actually just hold a space for them, to be compassionate, to forgive them, to forgive them and yourself. This is a time of forgiveness. Forgiveness means letting go, letting go. So something happens, there's an interaction that's difficult, see if you can let it go. See if you can enter into conversations and interactions with an open heart, with a, a non-confrontational non heart, with the intention to, um, to deal with your issues that you have with other people in a gentle way, in a soft way. That's the energy of Pisces. So hopefully that this, this energy will help us to do that so we actually swim along with the current and we're not swimming in opposite directions. Uh, if you're enjoying this, please just would you um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed and possibly just give us some feedback in the comments about how you're finding this energy. I'd love to hear. It's always really enjoyable uh, reading the comments afterwards. It feels like I'm not speaking into the ethers <laughs> every time. Um, yeah, so if you like it, please subscribe and hit the notification button. Like the video because that gets it out to more people and comment if you can. Um, I'm going to just tell you about a card that I drew, which is very apt for this time and this new moon. Um, and I'm going to read that to you now. It's actually a, a, a card out of the Wisdom of the Oracle pack by Colette Baron reed It's a really, really good pack, this. And the card that I drew was Between Worlds. And it's a beautiful image, which I've put up on the screen. Um, the essential meaning, and I'm going to read the whole thing because I think it's really relevant to what we're dealing with. Um, the essential meaning is transitions. Not being quite out of one situation and fully engaged in another. Temporary blindness, no man's land. The Oracle's message. Between the worlds is where you must let go of the tendency to make assumptions. This is a time when you're unable to see what is ahead. Cultivate curiosity and trust the process of change and growth. I think that's the, the key for this whole time that we're in, never mind just the new moon. You are done learning the lessons of recent experiences. In this place, between what was and what will be, is a state of making and unmaking and making again. What is essential now is to admit not knowing. There is great freedom and power to be unleashed. A mystery that is not yours to understand weaves the web of life with inner divine matrix of consciousness greater than your own thoughts, feelings, beliefs, desires and decisions. The seeds that were planted in the past begin to take root, but what surfaces will probably or possibly not be what you expect. When you are between the worlds, you're invited to see with the curious eyes of a child Glimpsing a rainbow for the very first time. Do so and you will not be disappointed. Then she's got a section here on relationships, which might pertain to you. Um, this is a time to explore the new energy between you and another. It's not a moment of certainty, but rather of discovery and curiosity. You don't yet know if this will last forever, so allow yourself to explore who you are and what is reflected back to you. And that could be in a long-term relationship. It could be with someone you've just met. This relationship is meant to educate you about yourself. And I want to say here, it's not just about love, intimate relationships. This is whoever's in your life at the moment, showing you a mirror. What do you need? What do you like or dislike? What values are important to you? You are in a critical phase of a relationship that must not be dismissed or hurried. So it's kind of seeing the lesson, seeing the growth in whatever stage of relationship you're with, whoever's presenting themselves to you. Prosperity message. In your work, sometimes you try things that have worked for others, hoping that you too will be successful. When this card appears, it reminds you that sometimes the path to your prosperity can feel like a gamble. Win or lose, you will learn much from what comes to you. It's a good time 
to bet on your skills and talents in new and different arenas. Remain curious, there's that word curious again, and with the right combination of timing and luck, you will stumble upon something golden that will be unlike anything you've known before. The protection message is be mindful of expectations. This is not a time for guarantees. Things might not go exactly as you plan or dictate. That's the mind. So expectations come from the mind. It's got to be like this. And if it's like this, then I'll be happy. If it's like this, then I can relax. It's not about that. So just be careful. Be, be aware of the expectations. Let go and see what spirit has in store. What takes hold in your life will be better than you could ever imagine. So it's a really beautiful card. I think it's very apt for the times that we find ourselves in. Um, so again, stay in your heart. Lean back. If it feels like you're overreacting, over-emotional, overwhelmed, see if you can lean back and go underneath the noise, underneath the drama, underneath the reactivity. And find that place that is peaceful and whole and real and infinite and holds infinite possibility. So I hope that that has helped you. If you'd like to book an astrological reading with me, you're welcome to do so via the description below. And I do um, astrological consultations, obviously the birth chart, and then I do transits and progressions, which means the planets that are actually active now for you personally uh, this year, I do that as follow-ups, um, once a year maybe, twice a year sometimes, and then I do life navigation. So using your chart as a tool, as a way in, to see what your blueprint is and to see what's working with your blueprint, that's how I actually do my life navigation um, sessions, which are a little bit like co life coaching, but it's life navigation. We're actually dealing with how do I navigate this to my optimal potential. So that's why I call myself a life navigator and not a life coach necessarily. I hope this has helped and wishing you a beautiful, gentle, soft, loving, beautiful, creative new moon. Thanks for listening.